Thank you so much for taking this course. This is the Bank Reconciliation course for Sage Instant and Sage 50 accounts. The company I'll be using to demonstrate bank reconciliations on in these videos is a fake company set up on Sage called Stationery and Computer Mart UK. So the bank reconciliation I will be doing will be a false reconciliation, but the process I'll be following to carry out the reconciliation is the same process I follow in real life with real companies and real businesses and it's the process I recommend that you follow when you do your bank reconciliations on Sage. So you'll need your Sage software obviously and you also need your bank statements. Now for the purposes of these videos I've created my own bank statements in Excel which look like this. Um, I have a the bank the statement number, I have dates of transactions, descriptions of transactions and then the monetary value of those transactions and I also have a bank balance running down here here's statement number 54 and statement number 55 so three pages worth of statements your statements will look very similar to this the reason I've created my own is obviously as this is a video and I'm filming my screen you won't be able to see the statements I'm working from and I want to ensure that you clearly understand everything that I go through in these videos. So what is a bank reconciliation? Um, it's important that we understand what one is if we want to carry one out. On a bank reconciliation we're reconciling the current account on Sage to the bank statements of the current account or we could reconcile any of these accounts. Um, you need to reconcile credit card accounts, petty cash accounts to ensure data on those accounts is accurate. So what we're doing, the word reconcile means to bring at one or to be at one. So we're ensuring what is on Sage on our current account is the same that is on our bank statements for the current account. There are a number of transactions that we can pick up on bank statements that we won't necessarily have posted on Sage, such as interest on accounts, interest in, interest out, customers who are paid by banks, direct debit, standing orders that may go out, things we may miss out on. So by reviewing the bank statements, we can ensure that everything that has gone in and out of the bank in real life has been posted onto Sage. Hopefully that has made sense. So the first thing we're going to do is highlight this bank current account um, and click this reconcile icon here. And you'll get a box appear that says statement summary. There's a number of boxes on this screen. It's only the first three that we're bothered about. The first is statement reference. If we bring up our bank statements, okay, so my first statement here is statement number 53. So that's the reference we want. It says end in balance. Now that will be our end in balance at the bottom of the statement, which is here, minus 1624.73. So minus 1624.73. Statement date. Now there are two dates that we could put into this statement date. The first is the date of the last transaction on this statement, but seeing that we're reconciling the whole of May, so the 1st of May to the 31st of May 2013, we can also just put in the last date of the statements we are reconciling, so the last date of the period we reconcile, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to put in the 31st of May up here, and click OK. You'll get this box up here. Now this box is the box that starts to scare people off. Um, and this starts to put people off stage, um, but it's fairly straightforward. And we don't need to know what all of these buttons do. In this top box here, we have the transactions that are on Sage up to the date that we put in. So the end date of the 31st of May, these are the transactions that are on Sage. And um, so we have money going out, money coming in. And then this bottom box is our reconcile page. Okay. And this is this reconcile page is what we want to we want this reconcile page 
to look the same as our bank statement okay um, so in a sense this is our bank statement down here and this is the transactions on Sage up to this end date now at the top here we can change the statement reference again we can change the end date and we can change the end balance okay in this bottom box you should have a red line appear that says Laos reconcile balance this was the last balance the bank was reconciled to um, so logically if everything's done right that balance should reflect the opening balance of our statement as this balance would have been the balance at the end of April it's the last period we reconciled if you're a new business a new company this is the first time you've ever reconciled then this will either be blank or it will say last reconciled balance zero and the balance will be zero as it was a new account created because you're a new business or company or if you have been trading a long time and you entered an opening balance when you created your bank account then your opening balance will show as the last reconciled balance okay so let's bring up our our statement okay so on the first of May our opening balance was 526216 okay and that matches our opening balance and our statement here 526216 so what I would normally do on my statement is give that a tick so I know the open balance is correct but seeing this is a video I'm just going to highlight in green okay now I'm going to go through these transactions one by one and see if they're posted on Sage if they're posted on Sage that's great I'll bring them down onto the statement on Sage if they're not posted on Sage then we need to post them onto Sage and hopefully this will make more sense as time goes on. So first of all, we have a Bax receipt. So £1,200 has come in to the bank from Bronson on the 3rd of May 2013. So we go to our, our bank reconciliation box now. We can soon see there's nothing for that amount there. And if we look down the details... We have a few paying in slips, we have legal fees and we have wages going out of the bank. So that's that, that transaction is not on Sage. Let's do this next one. £2,000 a Bax receipt once again. So it's a payment from a customer by Bax for £2,000 or $2,000 on the 5th of May. Once again, nothing there that matches that. We then have a pay in slip, VI500505, paid in at NatWest for £450. Okay, so let's look for our transactions. We have a 500507 for 100, a 50056 for 300, and a 500050 for 450. Okay. So that's the transaction we're after. So there's two ways we can move on to the statement. We can either click it once and click match and it will bring it down here. Or we can simply double click on it and it will bring it down here. So you'll see it's now moved from what's post on Sage to our statement. Okay, and let's highlight that in green. Okay, that statement's on. I direct debit for electricity and water. I don't remember seeing anything like that up there nope it's always good to check the details and the payment or receipt they're the two areas I keep my eye on overdraft interest of £13.71 nope that's not on there either then we have paid in at West 500506 for 300 which is here so we can double click or we can highlight it and click match so that brings it down here and let's mark that off our statement like so 